Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm in the garden and I'm going to do a review of my Ridley Dean TT bike. Um, so I've just got it set up here. She's looking pretty nice to be fair. Um, garden's looking good as well. Nice, <laughs> the grass is nice and cut. <laughs> the landlord's going to love this, but uh, yeah, so I'll go into the bike now. So it is my rest day and uh, there's a new bakery opened up in a different village. So I might literally opening today. So uh, I'm probably gonna do an easy spin there and see what, see what sort of cakes they've got going. But I'm gonna start at the front of the bike and I'll work my way back. So at the front of the bike, I've got the uh, Pro Miso Evo handlebars and extensions. Um, I think these look pretty nice. <clears throat> I've got some bar tape on there as well. Some people don't run bar tape, but I've decided just for training, it just adds a little bit more comfort. And I don't think it's going to, what well, it's going to make about 20 grams difference in weight. And also I feel like it might be more aero because it sort of helps the, instead of dropping off down here, it's sort of carries the airflow a little bit, but I, I'm, I don't know. I don't think there's going to be much benefit to not running bar tape. Maybe if I was, in like a world tour team and I had a pro mechanic to like change it every time I was racing um but I really it really fits into the stem really nicely I think when I start racing I'll put some electrical tape on these gaps down here just to sort of I don't know just sort of bodge it a little bit but like I've done here are these holes and then around here as well on the stem and then over these as well. My Garmin mount is, I think I got it from Aero Coach. So it's like a 3D printed, it's a 3D printed Garmin mount, which I zip tied on, but I've just used some electrical tape to help sort of smooth the airflow over it, save maybe a watt. <laughs> and then what's really cool about this is I've got 3D printed uh, angled spacers. So this is, I think, I believe a 15 degree angle, and that helps me just get into a more aero tuck. My mate helped me 3D print these and we sort of went through, we had to prototype quite a few. So Joe luckily has a 3D printer and he's really good at engineering and stuff. So yeah, no, I think that really helps get me into a better position because it's quite hard. You can't really buy angled spaces for this bar and stem or bar and extension combo. So. And then I've just put a little bit of electrical tape on these DI2 cables here because I haven't put any bar tape here just because uh, I don't really need it. It's not like I'm sort of getting like feeling the vibrations from the road in my hands here. Um, and then I sort of, it's quite a lot of effort getting the uh, DI2 cables down through here, uh, down into the stem, uh, the ex spacers, then into the stem. And then the junction box is located just under this cover here. You can sort of see it lifts up, so there's some bolts underneath. So when I want to charge my DI2, I'll have to take this off, but it's not a lot of effort at all. So moving it down to the brakes, what I love about this bike is the front uh, brake calipers are actually like, so I think they're carbon and they're sort of integrated into the actual fork. Uh, so they must have been part of the mold. And then there's this quite cool bit of design which has like a split here, uh, which I imagine helps the airflow around the fork. Even the neighbor's sheep are coming to look. Uh, they look like the animals from Star Wars, but they're quite cool. Uh, in regards to the wheels, um, I'm hoping I'll get a disc wheel when I start racing and so when I do a race because there aren't too many time trials but there's a stage race called the Tour of Lom in Normandy um, which is three stages two, over two days uh, so I hope to get a disc for that and then the front wheel, this is currently Adam's wheel because my front wheel doesn't fit in it because it's got a sort of a the rim profile is too wide, but I can probably borrow this. Well, I don't need to ask Adam, but maybe I'll speak to some people at the team as well. And maybe some guys at Cote d'Amour, maybe I could borrow one of their wheels, but we'll just see, we'll work that out when I get to it. So my choice of saddles is a, a Bontrager Hilo Comp. It's uh, sort of like a snub nose, sort of like a time trial and um, triathlon specific saddle. I find it's really comfortable, especially compared to the one I had on here before but um, yeah, it gets the job done. It means you can get a lot further forward on the saddle 
and like still comply with the regulations on where your saddle has to be and i've got it on i think in like a negative four degrees angle which just helps open up the hip handle and sort of allows you to sort of activate your hip flexors a bit more so in regard to the group set i've got ultegra di2 um, and the crank set, I've got a Durace. I'm really lucky to have a Durace SRM. I think SRM is just by far the best power meters there are. I originally had this on my old road bike, but it didn't fit on the, my new quota, which is a bit of a pain, but um, I put it on here for now. And yeah, it's working. I think SRM are just the most sort of accurate and most sort of consistent um, power meters you can get. I had Garmin Vectors and they just didn't really work at all. But this I've never had a problem with and it's just, yeah, it looks really cool in the old uh, the old crank as well. The old Durace crank looks pretty cool as well. And my chain ring is a 54, which to be fair, I'd say is a bit, I'd probably prefer a 55 or a 56, but I've also got a 39 on the inside. And then I've opted for sort of a, a derailleur on the front, just cause I think if you're racing for like a proper team where you can sort of, you can race with a one by, but if for training, like for training, it's, I think it's a lot better just to have a front derailleur because if you've got hills it's, and you're trying to go easy, uh, you can just change down. But I think if obviously if you're in a world tour team and you can just get it changed for a race, that's best. But I think for sort of everyday usage, it's good to have a front derailleur. The rear brake on the bike is located right underneath the bottom bracket, so it's super aero. Um, it's quite easy to adjust as well this brake so I, yeah I like this on my old Giant I had a Giant Propel and it had the TRP brakes that were similar to this but they were so awful like you couldn't even adjust like these are easier to adjust than my old road bike brakes so yeah no I'm, I really like these uh, they get the job done and they've got decent stopping power as well so my first in my first bike review on the quota I forgot to do a free hub sound check so I'm going to do that now quickly it's the same wheel but we'll see how it sounds Pretty good. I hope you enjoyed my t looking at my TT bike as much as I enjoy riding it. It's super fast. I haven't raced it or ridden it with a, a disc wheel in it yet, so I'm looking forward to doing that. It'd be good to race it in a uh, in that stage race, hopefully, and see how I go. I'm pretty confident I'll do well on it. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it as much as me and the the lambs and the sheep, or whatever they are. But yeah, uh, yeah. So if there's anything you want to see or have any questions about the bike, comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video.